Oh, hello, 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 welcome. Welcome, I'm Kat Miller. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you three ways to convert quality clients without feeling like you're selling. So welcome, come on in, grab a pen and paper if you haven't already and make some notes because I'm gonna be sharing with you heaps of gold. So if you are in business, I'm sure that you understand the importance of converting leads into clients but a lot of business owners really don't like this idea of being salesy, like being pushy, coming across as that awkwardness, right? We've all been in a sales conversation where we've felt uh, that the person doesn't really care about us and they're just trying to push their product or their service on us. So I totally get it if that's you. When I started out in business, I really hated selling. But the truth was I didn't understand it. I actually just didn't understand. I remember being in this, this event once and the guy said, raise your hand if you're in sales. And I was a personal trainer at the time and there was hundreds of us and uh, no one raised their hand. And he said, well, you've already lost the game if you don't view yourself as being in sales. And I remember getting this really icky feeling that I did not want to be known as a salesperson in business. But here's the thing, when you attract the right people who are a great match for what you're offering, it doesn't feel like you're selling. I'm sure you've experienced this in business before. It feels actually like an enjoyable experience. You don't need to convince anyone of anything. It feels like you're having a conversation with a friend. It feels so good and natural and it, it just flows. It's not this kind of oh, how am I going to try this tactic to overcome this objection? Like it's, it doesn't happen. So how do we actually do this effortlessly? Because converting quality clients, I'm not just talking about anyone, I'm talking about your ideal clients, your dream clients who have all the traits and everything that you uh, have put into your ideal client avatar when you've planned that out. So for example, your ideal client uh, knows a lot less than you about your topic. I was just sharing this in, in my inner circle group that you don't want to attract people who know more than you. And a lot of people show up with this imposter syndrome feeling not wanting to sell because they feel like they don't know enough or what if the person already knows what you're about to share. So that's, you want to make sure you design your ideal client avatar for people who are way further back in their journey. And when you get the right people into that conversation, then you're able to influence them for good. So you're helping them to overcome the block that's in the way of where they are, the problem that they have, and the solution that you're offering. True influence is helping them find a solution. Maybe you're not it. Maybe you're not the best solution, but you're able to help them influence them to change, influence them to know that they can do it, that they can get go from what I call from pain to paradise, you know, from their problem to being willing to actually change. So they're going from, I have this problem to, I want to change to, I need to change now. And if you're the right person that can help me, cool. But the, the priority is helping them pe people, helping people to see that they can change and influencing them to overcome their problem, overcome the block that's stopping them taking action. Because if we don't do that, then we're leaving them suffering. We're leaving them stuck in their pain. So if you want to be able to elegantly convert people, not feel like you're a salesperson, not even feel like you're selling, it's about true influence, which comes from a pure, genuine desire to be of service. And it's about helping people to get what they want. We're not, we're not trying to persuade or convince people that they should be buying what we're offering. We're helping them come to a great decision, the right decision for them. So if you're a coach or a healer or a consultant or a practitioner, like an NLP practitioner, uh, if you do any kind of therapy, anything like that, just give me a yes in the chat box if that's you. Just give me a yes, not the chat box, the comments box. If you do any type of coaching, consulting, if you're a speaker, if you're an author, if you're a healer, if you're a practitioner, a therapist, 
anything where you're directly helping people because if that's you you'll understand that you really want, want to help people get powerful breakthroughs and that's what you do you help people transform your life their lives and you help them go from stuck to moving again and having momentum and when that happens it's really simple it really flows so since 2003 I've been working with hundreds of well thousands of people actually um, to make those positive changes and get those breakthroughs in all different areas I started out helping them with mainly weight loss and then competing and fitness and figure and bodybuilding and then I went to nutrition coaching and weight loss coaching predominantly doing challenges then I went to mindset coaching NLP and now I do um, business coaching for the last uh, five years but what's really happened through that whole journey of 18 years of helping people transform is that people have breakthroughs and Converting people is is all about helping them have that breakthrough in that area of life that you're promising them And you think about a breakthrough it could be Like the penny drops, you know when you just have that aha moment and you have a revelation Or it could be like this epiphany moment That's absolutely transformational or something you've said or the way you've angled it uh, Has enabled them to have a breakthrough and it's it's just a a beautiful experience just give me a, a why in the chat in the comments give me a why if you've helped someone get that breakthrough before because if you have you'll know how incredibly powerful it feels um, Luke says it's best to be deliberate not desperate yeah I love that deliberate not desperate totally you do not want to come across with that desperate energy it really puts people off yeah so true great to see you here Luke so if you've helped someone get a breakthrough, I want to know from you, what do you actually help people get breakthroughs in? What do you help people in? Just pop that in the comments. What do you actually help people in? If you're watching the replay, just put a hashtag replay so I can circle back to it and, and come and read your comments. And let me know, what do you actually help people get breakthroughs in? Because conversion is, is about to start that breakthrough process. Uh, like one of my mentors Ben Harvey says buying begins their breakthrough think about when you've had a breakthrough Because you've invested maybe you've gone to some kind of seminar or course or event or Workshop and you've had a breakthrough Typically, I mean we have breakthroughs in free events But typically we've invested either time or money in order to have that breakthrough and it feels incredible and that breakthrough starts because we make a decision to actually take action and that's been then someone has influenced us so influence when you have the right heart you have the right motive influence helps someone improve the quality of their life so really we want to view sales as not as trying to get someone to change their mind but about discovering are we the right match to help them with the problem that they're struggling with and when you see influence in this way it completely takes the pressure off you you suddenly feel like you really want to tell people about what you do because if you're in business you have to constantly be telling people about what you do and it's so important that you know how to sell because especially if you're any of those things I mentioned coach consultant healer uh, author speaker practitioner you help people improve their lives and so you won't be in business if you don't sell if you don't confidently and boldly tell people about what you do so if you want to help more people and make a bigger difference in the world sales is one of the most important skills that you can develop I remember um, sitting in an event once and Jeffrey Slater said this line he said sales is the skill you do not want to learn but you have to learn he said most people don't want to learn it but without it you, you have to go back to a job. If you don't know how to sell, you do not know how to get money directly into your bank account. So let's dive into what are the three ways. I, I wanna just preface this by saying, I'm assuming that you have something of value and I'm assuming that you have a heart to really make a difference and help people. You're only selling what someone needs and you're not trying to sell them something that they um, don't need. So there's gotta be a need. Also, before uh, diving into how to actually convert, 
you want to make sure that you've got an offer that's actually good. So your offer needs to be good. So much of what goes into conversion is making sure you have a really great offer to begin with. And knowing, this this takes knowing, like really knowing what your ideal client, what they want, like really what they need and what they want. And this goes beyond just Googling, right? You cannot Google this. You need to have conversations with people, conversations with your ideal client because, and, and even surveys don't always give an accurate picture of what people truly are struggling with. It's, it's when you actually start talking to them having real life conversations, asking specific questions that you can craft an offer specifically to match your ideal audience. So sometimes when you hesitate to sell, it's because you're not really proud of your offer or you feel like you have to use these kind of tactics to sell something rather than actually having something that's such a no brainer that you're so proud of, you know that it's gonna give lots of value. So I just wanna start with making sure you've got the right heart and you've got the right offer. Okay, so here's the first way that we convert a quality client. The first one is that we, number one, is awaken their future identity. Awaken their future identity. Everybody has what I call a BFS, a best future self, a best future self. So they have this future self that they imagine. And the future self, you know, some people live there a lot of the time thinking about this best future self. Some people hardly ever revisit visit it, but everybody has something that they want to improve, some kind of version, whether they're slimmer, uh, whether they're healthier, fitter, stronger, got a great relationship, uh, improved their marriage, incredible parent, incredible grandparent, incredible business owner, author, speaker, there's something in their future that they want, their best future self, and it's an identity. And so the first way to influence someone for positive change is to awaken that vision, that identity of who they wanna be, and the identity that they're moving towards. It goes so much deeper than just what do they want to have, it's actually about who they wanna be. People don't wanna buy your product or service. They, they don't want a coaching session, they don't want an eight week course or to watch your 27 videos or whatever, they want to be or they want to feel like their best version of themselves in the future, their best future self. So in order to awaken that vision, we don't just want to focus on the method of how we help people, the features of our program, we want to focus on awakening in them this version of themselves that they'd like to become. Maybe it's dormant. Maybe they haven't thought about it for a lot of years and you're going to craft your questions in an elegant way to remind them of who they want to be, remind them. Because sometimes it gets buried under the stuff of life, right? So it's in there somewhere and it's our job as the salesperson or as the coach, like I think of selling as coaching. It's, it, to me, it's just a coaching session. And at the end of the coaching session, if we're a match, we go for it. So I view it like a quest, you know, coaching, so much of coaching is about the right questions and helping them change their perception. So it requires a lot of rapport, a lot of smart questions. It requires you to plan it. And it's a skill that you develop where you get them seeing and hearing and feeling who they are and what they're doing when they're when they envision this best version of their future self. So you want to ask people to remember that vision of being their best and also why it's important to them. So this takes time. You've got to really listen intently. You've got to notice shifts in their body language and notice what lights them up, notice their keywords, notice their, their body language shifting, their tonality shifting. So you've got to have that sensory acuity to be switched on, to be looking for the clues because not everyone just outrightly says it, <laughs> right? Who's noticed this? Sometimes you kind of got to go digging for that gold because it's not always top of mind with people. So many people when they're having sales conversations, they don't understand this. They like to rush it. And I used to do this. I used to just rush to, okay, let's get going. Uh, let's, let's get you started as opposed to really understanding this 
this future vision. I remember when I was a personal trainer, I, would, I just wanted to get them out into the gym instead of really taking that time to understand what they want, why it was important to them, what is going to be their driver, their motivator when it gets hard. I'd just be like, okay, yep, how long have you been in this state? Okay, what do you want to fix? Um, yeah, what do you want to fix? Okay, let's go. <laughs> like, I'd always try to rush them into some kind of 12 week challenge so that they could start losing the weight. But when people don't understand the tra trajectory, I often get that word wrong, of why, how they got to this point and then where they're heading, like their, their whole timeline, not just where they're at in this present point of time, uh, then we don't understand what's going to drive them to actually change. So when you're talking to people, really take notes of the words that they're connected to. And when they're passionate about certain things, you'll, you'll see and you'll feel that shift in their body. All right, so that's number one, is to awaken their future identity. How are we doing, team? Good to have you on here. Just give me a yes if you're tracking, if, you, if you're making notes, if you're here, if you're engaged, just give me a yes so I know that you're here. It helps me with engagement as well so more people will see this video. All right, number two is educate them educate them. So the market's really changed and we've changed how we interact from a buying perspective. So we're more educated now than ever before. You know, you can you can whip out your phone and, and educate yourself anywhere, right? So the world's changed and so the idea of selling is not really selling anymore, which is great. You can sell without feeling this, like you're selling by doing education-based selling. And this is this is completely different. The cool thing about the new marketplace and offering people your, your program or your, your service is that if you enjoy teaching, if you enjoy training and educating people and um, sharing information and advice with people, then you're in a really good position to understand how to influence someone and, and how to convert them. So because we're more educated than ever, these traditional old school selling techniques, they just don't really work anymore. So when I have a conversation with someone who potentially wants um, to get some coaching or mentoring or my program, um, rather than going through, you know, outdated sales techniques, like I learned sales techniques in 2003 when I did uh, my kind of apprenticeship at Les Mills and um, it was all very scripted and there were some great questions on there, some great processes, but it was very, uh, it was very like duh, 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 instead of a dynamic conversation and there wasn't a lot of education and education, now what do I, now what I do is rather than trying to talk about all the, the um, features, for example, uh, I educate them on whatever they're struggling with. So most people come to me because they want to build their coaching business or they want to get more clients or they want to improve their presenting skills or their copywriting skills or their automation skills. So I'll educate them on something uh, about what's working right now to get clients. And, you know, your potential clients, they don't really care about like the features of your product or your program. Like they don't care that there's this many coaching sessions and tech support and this many weekly um, group calls or whatever, they just want to know that you're able to get them what they desire in life and you can show them that you're the expert by educating them. So when you take the time to educate your clients, it can really dramatically shift things, especially with quality clients. Because quality clients want that education. They, they know that they aren't just going to buy until they understand why you're different, what you offer in terms of a result, not just features um, and benefits. So I use a three-step method for this, and I call it the CPR, CPR, like giving someone CPR. So the first one is your credibility. So if you want to influence someone, you want to first share your credibility, the kind of experience, knowledge, and skills that you have. Why would someone work with you? And I really saw this when I used to work in a gym. I worked in a gym in, well, I've worked in gyms all over the world actually, but I remember this one time at this gym in New Zealand where there was this gym instructor and he would always just walk up to people in the gym 
and they were doing some kind of exercise wrong, like a deadlift with a banana back or like they're doing the lat pull down and they're like completely like ricocheting their body back. And instead of walking up to them and, and, and saying something like, oh, hey, uh, um, I'm Bob, I, I've been a personal trainer for the last five years and I help people uh, correct their form so that they can safely train. Would you mind if I gave you uh, a quick tip on how to, how to protect your back when you're doing this exercise? Uh, so he would go straight up to people and just go, stop, and the whole gym would look around <laughs> and he'd go, you're doing it wrong. And it was just so embarrassing. I would cringe because he would not only call them out and embarrass them publicly, which is obviously a big no-no, no, but he wouldn't start with credibility. He wouldn't say, hey, uh, this is how much experience I've got. So anytime you want to educate someone, I recommend you start with framing it, framing it with your credibility. The next thing is process. So you share credibility, then you share your process. What is your process that people can go through step by step? Show them how you've organized your knowledge rather than just dumping a whole lot of information at them. You could say to someone, okay, hey, you told me you want to work full time in your business uh, so that you can have the flexibility of working from home. Is that right? Okay, great. So over the last 18 years working in business, I've discovered there are three main problems people face when it comes to having a profitable business. And then I'd share what those things. And then I'd talk about this is the process um, that you need to go through in order to have a profitable business. So first you need to do this and then this. And so I map out, I map out a roadmap. This is what I do on strategy sessions where the, the, the knowledge is organized. You know, there's so much bits and pieces of information coming at us. People love it when it's step by step and it's a really clear strategy. The R stands for results. So the third thing that you want to share is the kind of results you'll be able to create if they follow that process. So you might say something like, um, Sally followed this process and she was able to make 10 grand a month within her uh, first whatever this person followed it they were able to increase their conversion rate from 50% to 70% this person ran a webinar and made $2,000 so you just share some client stories and describe the results that your potential client could get if they follow your process so that is your CPR credibility process and result number three number three way to convert quality clients is to remember, this is a simple one, remember, you are the prize, you're the prize. Just pop that in the comments. I am the prize, I'm the prize. Say it out loud, I'm the prize, you are the prize. There are thousands of people that you could potentially help, but there's only one of you. Your time is limited. So if you're working with quality people, you don't need that many of them. And if you're working one-on-one, -on -one, you've only got a certain amount of appointments in your calendar. So you don't want to get people in there who are going to muck you around, cancel last minute, come to sessions late, not take it seriously, not committed. You don't want your calendar filled with those types of people. You only want to fill your calendar with people who really love working with you, who respect you, who trust you, and who take action. And money is a commodity. Money money you can get anywhere but you can only get you from you no one can get you anywhere except from you so i want you to remember you've got to prize yourself if you're coming in with this energy of chasing them then they feel like the prey and they're going to run away but if you come in totally neutral you're not chasing you're the magnet you know that you're the prize because you're good at what you do remember we're talking about quality clients you, you need to prize yourself. So stay grounded. Remember that you don't need to try and convince your idle clients. You want to find people who are already convinced because you've educated them, you've provided valuable content, and you're just helping them move through any kind of fears or limiting beliefs that are coming up that are stopping them improving their life. So the goal is matchmaking, right? It's not to try and sign up everybody. Not everybody is your idle client. Your idle client uh, is like if you understand them and you feel intimately like bonded to them because you've got rapport and you really want to help them and you can show them that it's a total win-win
and it all comes down to you getting to present to people the opportunity to improve the quality of their life. If you're not improving the quality of their life, then you shouldn't be selling to them, right? I used to really stress about sales, but now I love sales. I love any opportunity where I can change someone for life. I just absolutely love it. So if you want to be known as the one that people chase rather than being chased by them, I'd like to invite you to my free online live workshop that's coming up this Saturday, this Saturday, the 15th of May. I'm sharing my top client attraction secrets so you can consistently attract clients. We're going to be diving deep into like the best strategies, the fastest strategies, not the ones that are going to take you forever, but the things that have worked in my business to get me um, to six figures in less than 12 months. And it's very step by step. I'm diving deep into actually how to do it, how to attract them, how to build trust and how to um, sign up your quality clients. So sp spaces are really filling up fast this week. So if you want to join us, I'm just going to pop the link into the comments box there. Hey, Caroline. Carolyn, sorry. Hey, how are you? I've got a client, Caroline. Um, so I'm just going to pop the link there. So check it out and um, love to have you join us. I'm going through my client attraction formula. I'm going to share with you uh, great influential sales psychology, influence techniques, copywriting, um, how to create a conversion event, automation. It's jam-packed and it's completely free. So I'd love to see you there. Until next time, keep showing up, sharing your brilliance. The world needs you. Love you guys. See you soon. Bye for now.